Amen. because I'm happy internet why should I feel disarranged why should I should come why should my heart be lonely and wait for him
divine one nine one. Thank you, ladies. You sound good. <coughs>
request friends and family to stand up as you welcome the bride. Let us pray. Every good and perfect gift proceeds from you, Jehovah. This day, we can witness your faithfulness towards Lamech and Roswell. As we begin this ceremony, Jehovah, we want to pray for your presence. Allow your spirit that gives sweet fellowship to grant this meeting, and especially the union between Lamech and Roswell, to be in time upon us because in Jesus we pray. Just while we are still standing, it appears to me that these are the words of my brother Lamech, the words that the Lord himself speaks in Jeremiah 21 verse 3. The Bible says, the Lord appeared to me from far away. love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you, and again I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again you shall adorn yourself with tambourines, and you shall go forth in dance and merrymakings. Again you shall plant vineyards of the mountains of Samaria, and the planters shall plant, and they shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when the watchman will call in the hill of Ephraim, Arise and let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. In the words of the Lord to his people, that he loves with an everlasting love. And as we come to celebrate that love that I believe he has bestowed between Lamech and Rosemary to share, I want to ask who today is giving uh, this lady Rosemary Ocheng to be married to this man Lamek Diero. Okay, I can squeeze it. 
elders can. No problem. Once that question is I, together with the Mamam Ross, we're giving it to the Tari Lame. Amen. Let's give that a clap. Uh, thank you so much for that. And in that sense, I believe that the family of the Dieros are well represented. And I would want to receive a confirmation from them that they are ready to receive this lady to be married to your son, Lamek. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Amen. <laughs> And now, Lamek, it's the moment for you to receive the love of your life. Uh, you, together with your family, will move closer. And I appreciate the family of uh, Rosemary. And thereafter, uh, you will move closer. And Lamek will stand. Let the family of Lamek join up with the family of Rosemary. Appreciate them in the COVID style. Lamek, I believe they want to confirm that they are very genuine. I, I understand Ross has many sisters who look like her. And they are just making it easy for you that this is the one they are giving you. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I want to believe that Lamek's family will also get close and just say thank you. God bless. God bless. God bless. Amen. 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 Uh, we can all be seated Islamic gets closer to Rossman, and we're going to have the first session of this uh, with a music interlude uh, just before we plunge into the rest. They will come closer. As we as they come closer, we have our opening. We're going to enjoy some good music. Sing out. We get into details of our session. Okay. So sit and relax for this moment and enjoy some good spirit lifting music from the orchestra and the lead team. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Ken Tripp, and as you can tell from my name, I'm not from Kenya. <laughs> I'm from the USA. Okay. Ugunja, Siaya, those sides, you know. And so I'd like us to celebrate. This is a celebration. We have come to worship God and thank God for his goodness and mercy. And the best way that Rosemary and Lamech can do this is through singing. And so this is a sing-out. What is a sing-out? A sing-out is when we now sing our hearts out. If you've got any expressions within you that you need to release today, this is the time. If there's any prayer that you need to lift up to God, this is the time. And so we are going to start with the song, um, By Jesus, I Love Thee. This is song number 321 in the SDA hymnal. And this is how we are going to do it. The sopranos are going to lead us. And then the altos are going to join in the second stanza. And then the tenors and the bass. So if you don't know what I'm saying is, just, just go with the flow. Whichever tune or voice that you find works with you, flow with it. All right? 
Song number 321, My Jesus, I Love Thee. How are you going to sing? God is good. At this, at this juncture, I'd like to invite Tamara. Uh, Tamara, please come close by and with your sister, Tamara and Tiffany. They have a, a poem. Just come close. As you sing song 334, come thou fount of every blessing. Tamara and Tiffany, please come.
Amen. Amen. Now we're going to invite Tiffany and the sisters to give us a poem as the sanitizer sanitizes the mic. My wish for you, may God fill your, your lives with memories of treasure. Sorry, let me start again. My wish for you, may God fill your lives with memories of treasure and bring you happiness of knowing that God who fills your cup of life will keep it overflowing. May this day be the first of your dreams come true. May this be the start of a life of and mastering that is just begun. May this day be a day that you will remember when your hearts and lives become one. May love and laughter light your days and warm your hearts and homes. So here is some special advice from me to help you as a family. Keep your house filled with laughter. Make it fun forever after. Keep the kitchen filled with goodies. When we come, we can eat and give us lots of treats. Make sure you have a little budget with us in mind. May God provide for you as you plan to spend lots on us. May peace and plenty bless your world with joy that long endures. May all of life's passing seasons bring the best to you. And when you build your next house, make sure there's extra room for us. Trust me that there will be lots of fun and more sleepovers. May God bless your marriage. There's no way. 
and praise your grace still amazes me your love is still a mystery each day i fall on my knees cause your Your grace still amazes me It's wider, it's stronger, it's higher, it's Your love is still a mystery each day. I fall on my knees. Your grace still amazes me. Your grace still So, okay. What do you say to those lovely children? Amen. Your grace still amazes me was the theme of the song. And from my little music, musical experience, if you want to know somebody singing from the heart, they do this. You know, so um, uh, a few tips and lessons for people who don't know how to sing. If you want to, 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 to escape the, the, the critique, just give your all, let it all out. This is why we call this a sing out. And today we have a treat. Uh, you'll notice that the bride and the groom are not up here, but they're seated with the congregation because they wanted to be involved in this program. And so this next song, it will involve the bride, the parents, and uh, yes, Rosemary, uh, Daddy, uh, Mommy, and the brother. I didn't get the name. There is sunshine in my soul today. Amen? There is sunshine in my soul today. It's song number, I think, 470. So, uh, Madam Sanitizer, you will, we will need to get this mics to Rosemary and Daddy by the time we get to Sansa 3. So I don't know how we're going to do that. Um, okay. Our technical team, we will need more mics. There is sunshine in my soul today. So Stanza 2, uh, Teacher Rosemary and, and Daddy will sing together. Then Stanza 3, Mommy and small brother will sing together. And then Stanza 4, we will all sing together. Let's try this out and see how it goes. Let everybody be involved. Make sure every, the person next to you is singing so that we praise to God, God together. Okay? <laughs> Yeah. 
blessed sunshine when the peaceful happy moments That is a musical family, I believe, when you get to heaven. That is uh, one of the first songs that we will sing. When you get to heaven, you'll find that I'll be probably the entertainment captain. So I'll be choosing the songs that will be sung that day. So let me invite Port- Porter's Vessel to come and give us one song. And then Pastor, and then Pastor will take over. Only one who can give 
All right. We will all rise up and sing the, the song, There is Beauty All Around. When what happens? When there's money at home? When there's love at home? Um, this is song number 400 and Six, 652. Let's all rise up and sing together. loving heavenly father king of the universe, of lords this prof lamek the dear sister Mary, this great occasion we pray O oh lord that your presence and the choicest of your blessings will be with us in this place O oh lord we crave that this place will be filled with the fullness of the presence of the Holy Ghost. That we will continue rejoicing through and through this ceremony until we come to the end of it. And beyond this, 
We pray for Prophet Lamech and Sister Rosemary that you'll bless their marriage abundantly. And all their families and friends will be blessed by extension. Lord, may your love shine this day. May your glory be seen. May your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Guy. I'd like to take this moment to just welcome all of you and um, thank you officially uh, for this occasion, Lamech and Rosemary. You guys are looking very nice. I've never seen you like this before. And if, if somebody from maybe the 10 years ago would come and see what is happening right now, he'd wonder why we are all wearing uh, face shields and masks. And yeah, these, these, these are very strange times that we are living, but we are glad that the grace of God is still abounding with us. And so it is by the grace of God that we are still able to have this event. And so feel at church, feel at the feet of Jesus Christ. This is a celebration where all of us are invited to rejoice and be glad in it. And so um, let me just start by introducing the ministers who are here in front. Um, on my extreme right is Pastor Guy uh, from uh, West Kenya Union. Uh, he's the one who gave us the opening prayer. You can weave. And then on my left is Pastor Kigundu, all the way from Kenyatta University. He's here to, he will sing us a song and many other things. <laughs> you can greet us, Pastor Kigundu. All right. And the officiating pastor is... Um, Pastor Odiambo, uh, they'll do it together with Pastor Kigundu. Pastor David Odiambo, uh, formerly comes from Philippines, but now he's here. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Odiambo from AUA, you can also greet us. All right, and um, we have people who know Rosemary and Lamech, and there are people who um, are family. We'd just like you to feel at home. Let's start with uh, Rosemary's side. Where are the people from, uh, not Kitale, I know you, your home is in Kitale. <laughs> uh, people from Kamagambo. Let's see everyone from Kamagambo. All the Kamagambians. Let's see you. Just rise up and greet us, all the people from Kamagambo. And then I will ask Daddy to greet us. Let us pass my mic to Daddy to greet us. Everybody from Kamagambo? What do you say, church? Amen. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, where is the mic, lady? Okay. Okay, the mic is coming. We, and since the idea has stood up, we will have to wait. And we will just wait. Okay, there's one mic here. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. And now we will want to welcome everybody from Karachi. This is Lamex, uh, in Lua, we say tourmates and family. Uh, people from all, everybody from Karachwonyo, let us just uh, see you, stand where you are, and just stand up and greet us. What do you say, church? Amen. These are the Karachwonians. Karachonians, the, uh, the microphone, okay. You can use mine. Take this one. So. Hallelujah. Amen. There is sunshine in my soul today, isn't it? Amen. God is lovely and wonderful. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Tom. And um, 
friends and family and everybody else in the congregation, colleagues and people who pray and worship with them, uh, feel at home and feel at church. And um, right now, I'm just going to hand over the program to Pastor Biambu. Our God is good, and all the time. Amen. Prof, this is a great day the Lord has done for you and Rosemary, my sister. That was a very short distance there. I want to see how you guys can walk. Which one is the longest? This side? I want you to come with your best couple on here. Let me give you an opportunity at least to showcase. So, I don't know, I feel like singing, but I know there are so many singers that are part of the party. Let's have some music. Just give us some music for them. Yes, yes, that's good enough. Please, take the longest route. Amen, amen. Let's give them a clap, please. The bridal team, at such a moment, you should have stood up just to honor them. Amen, amen. Thank you, man. Thank you for standing up. Family and friends to Prof. Lamek and uh, Sister Rosemary, let me join them to welcome you to this very special occasion uh, that the Lord has granted them. I know as we have had the, invita uh, the welcoming from our elder, actually, did anybody welcome you? Yeah, Elder Tai, Trip, Tai, Trip from USA, that is United Sierra Lego. Ugenya. Okay, welcome the people. Can you stand up and say hello to everyone? All the time. Tonight. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much, Elder Tripp. I know that you're accompanied with another elder from Oasis, uh, Elder Fred Nyandigis. Andrew Nyandigis. I'm told that you usually don't leave your wife. Is she around today? Uh, and you're keeping one meter? Really? <laughs> okay. Please, mom, can you stand up also? Let's see you. Praise God. Amen, amen. Can you say hello to the congregation? Thank you. Thank you. Sir. From Sunshine also, I'm made to understand we have elders. From Sunshine all the way from Eldoret, please. Can we see the elders or the members or the pastor? Oh, Pastor. Pastor, you're around? Uh, pastor, where is Pastor from? Sunshine Pastor. Pastor, please, I have an extra chair for you. Come. There's work. And I'm also made to understand the chaplain of this university, Adventist University of Africa. Thank you, all members from Sunshine. Thank you for coming. Our chaplain, who is the one who takes care of the spiritual life in this institution, Pastor Mbuchi. I'm meant to see that you're also there with your wife. Probably greet us and then leave her for a little moment. I'm not making anything asunder. Then you come. I'll also give you a chair. Yeah, come. You know, we have our elder, Elder Lamek, wedding today, and probably people will appreciate he's a minister. 
And that's why we have a number of pastors coming. I guess if it wasn't for COVID, we could have had all pastors here. We appreciate your ministry. <coughs> Elder Rosaline Ujawachwa Nyuma, Atawewe, we appreciate your ministry. Thank you so much, Elder. Thank you. Let's have a word of prayer and then we can read the word of God. Um, I'm meant to understand the uncles of, uh, um, of Lamech. Okay, elders, I'm sorry we have, as I've told you, we have a wedding here for an elder, so we have several ministers and we want to recognize. Uh, elders from Siala Church, please could we see you? Any representative there? All the time. Thank you, thank you, elders, for coming. And thank you. Now, there's some special people that I'm going to welcome at a certain point. It's very special. I've not welcomed you now, but I'll welcome you at some point. Uh, let me give you a time to breathe in. Let me pray. And then we can hear the word of God. Lord, our Father in heaven, we know that it's, it's good and pleasant in your sight to see us all gathered here in unity as we come to celebrate love between Lamech and Rosemary. Father, as I open this word, I pray that you will grant me the revelation necessary for a word for this season, that your children will receive a revelation that will take them forward into the new face of life. Have mercy on me, have mercy upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to read the book of Genesis 26, a very familiar text or a story. And I will read verse 8. Genesis 26, and I want to read verse 8. The Bible says this. When he had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistine, looked out of a window and saw Isaac. My translation is betraying me, but he's saying laughing with Rebecca, his wife. Now, I guess some translation that I have there, wow, that is the one I was looking for. Uh, the King James translation says that, behold, Isaac was spotting with Rebecca, his wife. That is a point I want to emphasize this morning. Some translations will say that Isaac was caressing Rebecca. You know, I have young girls that are now 24, 20, and, um, and, um, and, 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 and 24, 20, 22, and sometimes they wonder, they ask me when they find me at times doing what the Bible says, spotting their mommy, laughing with their mommy, caressing their mommy. They say, ah, daddy. You know, it, it, it appears at times that these are things that young people think that are reserved for the young only. And I want to give the word love for this word, sporting and caressing and laughing and jesting and playing. I want to talk about love to my brother Lamech and Rosemary. The Bible says it was not on their wedding day. It says after it came to pass, after a long time, they were still playing. They were still caressing. They were still sporting. They were still laughing. What is it that brings a couple of this age of Isaac? Uh, the Bible doesn't tell us the age of Isaac at this time, but at least we are given a hint by that statement or that phrase after a long time. Now, the experience of Isaac is one that relates so much to everyone who reads the Bible. Because the experience of Isaac is one which ties up in everything that has to do with a God who loves. Because Isaac is a child of Abraham. At least it's good for us to go back to some Sabbath school teaching and understand that Isaac was a child of promise. He was one that God allowed to be born of a woman who had been barren had not received the blessing of a woman to see a baby cry on her laps. But because of a God who is not limited within human mechanism or within human operations, the Bible tells us 
of a woman called Sarah gave birth to Isaac. Isaac is coming out of God's grace. Isaac is born out of God's own sovereign power. Isaac is one, if you so wish, born out of sovereign love of God to a woman that was barren. Isaac is a baby born out of time. When everything had been written off, when everybody had already said, now let's accept the circumstances of life. The Bible says that Sarah became pregnant and she gave birth to a baby called Isaac. People of God, when God decides that he's doing something, human beings cannot set categories. And in this sense, we see that Isaac is a sign, is a, is a type of where we are today. I know some of us may have written us off today for the wedding we are having today. And I've said that probably I will never be able to celebrate this wedding today. But I'm celebrating because what is possible with God is impossible with man. Hallelujah. Amen. There are things that happen in your life and at times you write off yourself. There are things that happen and you imagine that probably I've passed the limit. But I'll tell you that we, we, we are dealing with a God who does things out of time. Actually, time is a category for us men. Time is not a category for God. And the Bible tells us that this is the Isaac today. Isaac is not only a symbol of the things that God does out of time, but Isaac is also in this chapter 26 especially, of a symbol of the blessing that God bestows on people, even without applying for them. You know, uh, the, the, the sign that tells us about Isaac is, among all the children that will be born after Abraham, it's only Isaac who never dug a well. Isaac alienda kuchimbua tu zile visima babayaka alikuwa mechimba. That is the one that he died, meaning he wouldn't sweat. His things were of grace. His things were of God. God himself initiated and made them happen. And no wonder the Bible is bringing out something which is key to me, saying that Isaac and Rebekah were experiencing a life of joy. Now, when I come to speak to Lamech and Rosemary and to others of us who have been married for a while, there is something they call love. And I'm drawing it from that word caressing and laughing and sporting uh, what is love? Because I guess this is what is uh, Rebek, um, Rosemary and Lamech I want to suggest for you today for love that endures, as I read in the text at the beginning, that everlasting love. Love is a gift that God has given you. I want to believe that there is nothing more. There could be other issues that you have, but I want to believe because this is the ingredient for every lasting marriage. Love. And this love is not what you are going to seek for yourself, Lamech or uh, Rosemary. This love is the love that Paul speaks about, the love that bears with all things. The love in 1 Corinthians 13 that believes all things. The love that hopes all things and the love that endures in all things. This is the love that I believe that is found in the experience of Isaac and Rebekah when they still have to play around in the field. You know, I'm visualizing in Palestine, out in the dry lands, you see this man and this lady sporting. And you know, at a particular moment, uh, this time, uh, you know, the things that are from generations follow the children because we also know that the same experience was with the daddy, Isaac's daddy, Abraham. We all know that at one point in Genesis 12 and 20, the Bible tells us that seeing that Sarah was so beautiful, Abraham was intimidated that the Pharaoh could kill him. And therefore, he decided to deceive. Many people always want to catch me, Pastor, is it okay to deceive? Now, when the Bible gives us such things, they don't give us pres prescription that you have to take there and say, now, if Abraham deceived, then I should also deceive. The Bible is just telling us how human it is and how God is able to accommodate every kind of personality and character. But anyway, the point I wanted to make that can you see that the things that the fathers do 
are more likely going to be followed up with the children and with the children and the children's children. Somebody has been wondering why God punishes children and punishes them to the generation because it's likely that what the father does, the children will do and the children, other children will do. And we see that in Isaac. What happens at this particular point, Isaac felt intimidated also as he got into the Philistine land. And therefore he cheated to say that Rebekah, she was also pretty. Her, Rebekah was pretty. Probably the only person who could beat Rebecca in prettiness is Rosemary today. <laughs> she was pretty people. And the man felt intimidated that the people of Philistine would capture him and kill him. So he decided to tell a lie. But the Bible tells us after a long time in staying in Philistine, Abimelech, which is the title of the kings of Philistine, was standing in the house and when he looked into the field, he saw that that kind of conversation. <laughs> so, you people, you understand. There are certain greetings when some people greet each other. This is what I imagine was happening here. It was not something normal. Anyway, in the Palestine and the Bible times, the kind of laughing and sporting that the two had could also be heard in a brother and sister. But Abimelech was not a fool not to discern that this is beyond brother and sister. This is something extra. And that's what the Bible tells us they were spotting. What is it to love? I know that sometimes this love issue has been made very, very um, shallow, if I have to, for a lack of a better word. But love is very compound, especially when we are talking about love in the church. I want us to imagine that love is a component that I want to suggest to you too, which is very biological. It's natural. It's the, what the young people call it chemistry, passion. And that chemistry doesn't die with age. Passion remains with people. I'm about to give him a human being. That is the translation. Passion. It's a physical feeling, my elder. It is a feeling that draws you to somebody. I know when people get married for a while, they start complaining that it is gone. And I'm going to explain about that. That is an element of love. You cannot find it falling on a stone. It falls only in human beings. Because it's in us. God has put it in us. That you have to have some chemistry, some passion that draws you towards somebody and that also is necessary but there is also that which is beyond your physical and that which is emotional and that is intimate that which draws you with the things that you share the closeness that you have with somebody apart from that passion there is this emotional intimacy built on the things you share with somebody the honesty the support you give each other intimacy that's what a part of love. But there is one that I believe the Bible sometimes emphasizes on, and it's necessary, and this is the love of choice, which is commitment. So we have the passion, intimacy. Please follow me. Those are the three things I'm going to emphasize. Then I invite Pastor Kigundu to make it real. There is the love, which is passion. There is a love which is intimacy, emotional intimacy, which comes about, which goes beyond the chemistry that draws you to somebody and the sharing that you have with somebody. And then there is this love, uh, which is, I want to say it's cognitive. It's something you make a choice about. It is going to be the commitment. This is where you love somebody because you, because of, of who they are, not because of what they do or what you feel about them. Yani umeamua tu sasa mina kupenda. Yeah? And that one survives time. It's commitment. It's a choice. And this is the love that draws us to the church. Because it's a love bonded with obligation. You know, the other kind of love sometimes have trouble, like especially the passion love. It's a love that at times shies away from commitment and taking obligation. You just want to feel good, but you don't want to commit yourself. That is the kind of love I share with my daughters. I tell them that kind of love sometimes can be 
destructive. But yet it's necessary. So what is love anyway? I would say that love entails all this. I know sometimes people take it so cheaply and say the love of God, agape love, but this is a limitation of understanding because agape love does not survive. In such an instance, God, when Jesus expresses the agape love to us dying on the cross, he doesn't only reserve that. In the book of John, chapter 21, when Jesus is speaking to, his, to John, he says, John, do you love me? Now, when you go back there, he's not speaking of agape love. He's speaking in the second question, speaking of the filial love. Do you love me in the sense, do you share my ideals? Do you share my values? Do you share the things that I appreciate? Intimacy, filial love. And Jesus also has expressed the Eros love in instances where he has shown deep, deep attraction to certain people. In some places, say, and he loves. So I want to say, children of God, that I appreciate that both of you love God and you both of you are in the church. And sometimes the problem is we remain with the latter part of it and say, well, we are committed. We love each other. We love each other. I know I love you. And at that time, we somehow shelve the passionate love and the intimacy love, and then people start having problems and wonder, did I make the right decision? You made the right decision. It's only that you have allowed your love to be only partially understood. And it's from there that I want to ask the next question. So if you want to understand what is love, what is it that brings Isaac to sport and laugh and caress with Rebecca, it's because I believe there was the pool of chemistry between the two of them, there was passion. But I believe also they shared many things in the sense of intimacy that was drawing. But that which held it all together was the commitment. There was a choice that they made that I'm loving you. I'm loving you, Nyakamagambo, even when it's raining cats and dogs. And when you turn to him, Did you hear that? Not because even your cat dendi gone yereki here. Ise here and kechi se amua. You have loved him, and therefore you've made the decision. That is commitment. But don't remain there. Don't remain there. When you hear people talking about love, yawaze, it's because they remain there. They commit themselves. Ase heri nyoro poda heri a hera kataka wono. That is love, Yawaze. But the love the Bible talks about is composite. It's passionate, and it's intimate, and it's committed. That is the first question. That is love. But now there is a problem. We have all understood what love is. But there is a problem. The problem is, how do you give this love, and how do you receive this love from the person that you have now met? How are you going to give it? And how are you going to receive it? You know, sometimes people struggle with looking for love, but at times it's not even about re re uh, giving love, it's about receiving love. There are people who it's so difficult to receive love. You see, people may be wondering, God has said, I have loved you with the everlasting love, but many humans today still do not appreciate it. They have still stood aloof. They are still hardened their hearts. Why? Because it's not natural for human beings to receive love. They have to prepare themselves to receive love. And I want to believe that even in marriage, it's not automatic because you're married to somebody, you're going to receive love or give love. You have to cultivate it in your heart to be able to receive love. You know? And that is when you begin to understand each other, when you want to give love. How do I love this man? How do I love this woman? Again, we'll have categories here. There are people who appreciate what we call the romantic love. Essentially, that is what has to do with the chemistry. There are people who that is all that they appreciate. Now, romantic love has the two things mixed together. There is the intimacy and passion. But commitment sometimes is left out. So, uh, and that's why young people appreciate this so much. Because, you know, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good. Yeah, it's not that it's bad. It's only that when you are starting to now live together and we're trying to seek how do I give and receive love, I want to understand that romantic love is not all the same, but I want to appreciate that it is necessary. 
because it has the two ingredients of passion developing that pull and also it has the intimacy part of it which has to do more of what we share together and what we appreciate so that is one uh, we our, you I, i'm giving it to you people because i don't know you but i want to imagine that you people will be looking out when you go there you'll have to appreciate style the love style is it a romantic love is, is she and there are people who are satisfied in, in any way is it intimacy is it about passion she wants me to uh, every woman by the way jakarachuanya Every woman appreciates passion. She wants to feel that you are drawn to her. So we're not writing it off. We're not writing it off. There is one that I call companionship love, where, again, this is where mostly good church people remain. Good church people. Good church people have what I call intimacy love, and they have commitment love. Every church person knows I've made my vows to God, and true indeed, you make your vows to God. Every good church person knows that I have to share with the pattern in my life. But many church people think that biological love, nitabiambaya. In fact, if it wasn't written in the Bible, I could not have even been speaking about that Isaac was playing. And sometimes it's left rosemary. Sometimes ladies think, you don't have to involve in those two making uh, Those who don't understand, like my sister, I'm saying that there are times when ladies imagine if you're married now, you don't play children's games. You become serious. But that is a problem. That is what you call companion, companionship love, apart from the romantic. That is another stage, better off, but still troublesome, because anyway, these are two committed people. They have the cognitive decision. They love each other. They share things. But there is a lack of energy. Energy, you know, that simmers, that touches those things together. There's a lack of... And sometimes you wonder how these people get to survive. And that's why we look at another one, which we call the consummate love. Ties all this string together. The basis of consummate love, the basis of it is commitment. But we don't forget the two arms of passion and intimacy. This is going to build you. So my suggestion to you, as you two get together, is to appreciate that love is composite. It desires passion, it desires intimacy, and also commitment. You are very good church people. You are born again. You are full of the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit dwells, there is fullness of joy. And one element of the fullness of joy is that drawingness to the people we love. We know we, we, we love. You know, God is a, in the cross of Jesus Christ, there is a deep expression of passion, which even drives one to death. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Song of Solomon that love is greater than death. God expresses that on the cross of Jesus to show that love is greater than death. That is passion. That is passion. He is committed to love us with an everlasting love, but he's not stood back aloof and said, I have committed to love you with an everlasting love. He comes and makes a demonstration in the cross of Jesus. Passion. I guess as much as you all will death, is a preferable option than love for each other. But the thing I want to encourage you is passion has to be kept there. Passion has to be kept in the, in the play. Now, passion dries up. And that's where the problem is. Passion dries up. With time, with the stress of life, somehow you, you stop feeling attracted to somebody. But I want to tell you, the more you invest in your commitment to somebody, that passion keeps blowing. Yeah? The more you commit that I've made a choice of loving this person, the passion for this person continues blowing. It will dwindle. Intimacy will dwindle. 
But I know the cognitive element will remain, meaning the commitment you make. Because first of all, you've made it before God. You've come here and say, this woman, this man, I've loved you eternally. Before God and all these witnesses, I've made the decision that I've loved you. So it remains. And that becomes the driving power that keeps the passion to be. So, remember you made the decision and your love will still glow. Glow. Are we together? So, let me give the, <clears throat> the suggestions. I know that the first thing that I want to say, cultivate passion. Cultivate passion. Passion is one thing, as we said, it's physical. So, passion, like we saw you walk together, uh, Prof. Kaki wotho kodeno, kanya saa yo iye, kudaka la chiel. Jadon, kiki bigai church to don't want me to away. Tini telo idi church in elder ma kanisa. I ditch gi pulpit moingo kananga mo nya saa yo mi. I see men in the church very busy with the pulpit, but they have forgotten whom God gave them. And imagine that God is happy. I want to challenge men who are listening to me. That woman, God has given him to you, or given her to you, to be the little man's test of the love you have for him. She makes you vulnerable, something which is very necessary for the grace of God to have impact on somebody, to be vulnerable. You know, a, a woman in a man's life is the only thing that makes you understand that you are weak at some point. And that is the reason a man who appreciates the woman in their lives and being vulnerable in complimenting them, having that joy like Isaac and Rebecca, playing around and being, yeah, it's something that opens you to the grace of God too. So man of God, I know you are a leader. I know God has called you to many responsible places. But I want to encourage you, cultivate passion in your relationship to this woman. Remembering that every woman find satisfaction in the relationship they keep. I know that you will find satisfaction in your work, in your ministry, but this woman will be satisfied in the relationship that she keeps with you. That will give her fulfillment of life. She will sing hallelujah as many as they are as she finds a good relationship between the two of you. Cultivate passion. The second thing I want to say, cultivate intimacy. Times you have to share. Prof with all the responsibilities God has given you and the callings that you receive day and night, schedule intentionally so that you cultivate intimacy. Yeah, sometimes just put off your pages. Nowadays, I think there are no pages. There are other things. So that you can have that moment with this lady to cultivate that intimacy. Intimacy will be cultivated in having special times together to listen to each other, and unconditionally accepting each other and conditionally accepting each other will cultivate intimacy between the two of you and focusing on the things that you have in common commonalities the thing that you share that will help you to share intimacy and also one element that people forget about developing intimacy is being very intentional in your spiritual pursuits and I don't want to remind my elder about your priesthood position in the family. But that spiritual component, people think that God makes things boring. That is the thing that brings out true intimacy. As you encounter God, then you are able to share that which you receive from God and overflow of what God has for the two of you. So please, cultivate your spiritual dimension. I know you are a prayerful lady. And you know the temptation of every woman when they get married, they get satisfied. But remember, don't depend on the family prayer. Be still the woman that had a closet. Praying alone and studying the word of God alone. And then bring that overflow when you come to meet this man. You know, there is a way God gives people. I don't know how to explain it. Just like Jesus tells Nicodemus. Some of these things we can't explain. But they are like wind blowing. You feel and you see the effect that if you cultivate your own spiritual dimension, when you come to pray together, it becomes more intimate. And finally, cultivate something. But probably before I go there, 
before I go to the final one, which is very, you know, I've talked about passion and intimacy. I see you feeling like you want to give a testimony to this word with a piece of music. Am I right? Yes. Okay, come. There is an element in which I've spoken about the heavenly experience that you're going to have, you know, this love that God is giving you today, Rosemary, is a heavenly gift. It's one that will make your uh, dry moments to be uh, wet. It's one that drives the cloud of sadness away. It's one that will bring you at a place to appreciate God's gift that you've received with this man. And, and I know that one point you shared with me a song. I don't know whether you still remember it or meeting this man has made you forget it. <laughs> Try. Even if you stumble, I'll just take it. Okay, let's see a song and then I'll finish after that. A fervent prayer rose up to heaven. A fragile soul as losing ground, sorting through the earthly bubble. Heaven heard the sound. This world's alive of no distinction. Only tries, yet gazing down on this unlovely one, there was love in heaven's eyes, in heaven's eyes, there are no losers. In heaven's eyes, no hopeless goes. There's only people like you with feelings like me. And we're amazed by the grace we can find in heaven's There is no hopeless cause. 
we can find in heaven's eyes. Amen, 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 amen. That's powerful, Sister Rosemary, in heavenly place. Bridges in heavenly places. Man of God, I hope that's a blessing. Finally, as you cultivate passion and intimacy, please remember to cultivate commitment. It's not automatic because you've taken your vows today. Satisfy each other's needs. Yeah? Fulfill the promises you're giving each other today. Make it your own pursuit. Love each other for the sake of the person you've loved, not for the sake of yourself. That will be self-seeking. Love for the sake of the other. And for this moment, hoping that you're going to cultivate passion and intimacy and commitment, I want to invite Pastor Kigundu to make it real for you. Please stand up. Thank the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. I'm very excited about this day because um, Rosemary they grew up with my wife from Kitale, and so when I see the Ochiens. Mrs. Ocheng was especially very close to my mother-in-law. So I'm very happy to see you. To God be the glory. So I'm very happy to see you, Rosemary, here because those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. This to me, this to me is a testament, testament of the faith in God. I want you to come here so that uh, you move away from that one. Just come close. Just come close. Now, the other thing that makes me very excited about this day is that uh, Professor Diero was one of my elders when I was a young pastor. 95, 96 in New Life Church. I was just trying. I didn't know anything, but I remember you're very supportive. That's why I'm here to support you and say we're together. So we are together. And so we want you to take this moment and exchange your vows with each other. And um, so we'll be, sorry, 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 Pastor. We'll begin with, um, we'll begin with Lamech. Please, I know there's COVID, but uh, the others can stay away. But you, uh, you, Mokopamoja, hey. Yeah, the others. The others can stay but you. No, you not no number plate. You know. Now you can see. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be away. Don't worry. The two of you you're all right. And when you're speaking, forget these are lizards on the wall. Look at the heart. Look at the eyes. Eyes are the windows of the soul. Thank you. All right. Rosemary, these are my vows to you. Rosemary, the Wasili Beach experience is a memorable event in our lives. I remember struggling to save my life in the sea and making my proposal with a snorkel on my mouth while hanging on a floater. I realized I lost my planned opportunity. I want to thank God for figures that can write proposals on sand. Thanks for your response, which is now not on sand, but freshly engaged in my mind, that by the grace of God, you then chose me. The beautiful hymns you shared with my mom will, will also make We'll also make a memorable story for tomorrow. 
Here we are today before God and this congregation. I have seen you calm and anxious. I have seen you happy and excited. I have witnessed you patient and also not so patient. I have witnessed you very reasonable, but also quite defensive. I have, been, I have seen you get late and sometimes very early. I have seen you serious, but most times very jovial. I have seen you playful, naughty, and fun-loving. I have seen you kind and compassionate. I have seen your strengths and weaknesses, and today I choose you. Amen. I'm ready to spend my life with you. Because God is love, the source of love, I promise to love God and harvest my love for you from the wells of the heart of God. I promise to let you grow in safe space and experience God's purpose for you. I promise to support you and protect you at all times. I promise to guard our marriage against foreign and domestic forces. I promise to fight for us and to protect what we have with every beat of my heart. I promise to listen to you above all voices, but also to respond. I promise to be kind to you and to treat you with respect. Rosemary, I will always love you, Osiepa. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. All right. I did not know that my elder could say it better than Solomon. Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, Rosemary. Now, Mac, ever since our first meeting at the waterfront, I'm grateful to God that this far we have come. My most memorable thing and experience is when you told me that your favorite dish was omena. <laughs> I have seen you laugh so loud and also very composed when you're not so happy. I have seen you win many battles, but also lose some that are not worth the effort. I have witnessed you turn to God when we both hit a snag. You have been my reliable prayer partner for more than a year now, and God has answered all our prayers. I have experienced your kindness beyond measure, especially during the hardest times in our family. Thank you for such a time. Today, before God and man, I choose you. I promise to love and respect you and pray that God will teach me how. I promise to support and stand by your side at all times. I promise to be your helpmate to make our home a place of cheer, laughter, and love. As we stand here today, I know that our marriage is a testimony of God's goodness and that many others through our journey will have their hopes rekindled. Yes. Having shared from my heart with these words, I know that together with God and you on my side, we can face the world. I'm happy to be called your wife. Amen. I love you, Lamek Usiepa. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. That's a befitting, befitting response. Because of the vows you have given to each other. To each other. In the presence of God, the parents, family members, and all your friends, it gives me great, great joy today to pronounce you husband and wife. Amen. God has put together what God has put together. Let no man ever, ever, ever put 
asunder. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Now, this is your wife. You may kiss, you may hug, you may high five. The bride, she's your wife now. Amen and amen and amen. The choice is yours, my elder. The choice is yours. And our prayer is that uh, many years from now, you'll still be sporting. Amen. 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 Yes, yes. All right. Hey, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Not yet. Hey, hey. What God has put together, let no pillow <laughs> put us under. <laughs> Ah, yes. I love this. I love this. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayers. This is an answered prayer. This is an answered prayer. Mr. Eli, we thank God. We thank God. Continue that work of bringing up these young ladies. Now, what I want us to do, to seal before we pray, I want us to seal those vows with a candle. John 1 verse 5 says the light shines in darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. This is what these candles will signify on top of your vows. That yes, there are, there are waves and winds and darkness that tries to snuff out the light of your marriage. But just as these candles, if one to Lamech, give one to Rose. Just as the light is not extinguished, extinguished in darkness, I pray that God will keep your marriage strong. Light, light shines in darkness. But even in spite of all the winds and all the waves, and the, I pray that you will continue being strong in the Lord. Amen. Number two, when you put those lights, that light on, the candle on, take your time. There's no hurry. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You will not put your candles off. You know why? You don't stop being. You continue with your individuality in marriage. So, Get the hold of that one, lift it up, and I pray that your home will con your home will continue shining in darkness. Amen. That is our prayer for you. That is your prayer for you. Continue being in a conspicuous place as you shed the light of Christ to all the world in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, thank you. Now you can bring the pillows, Pastor. <laughs> Pastor, you'll come and we'll right. decide. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, please, for us, families and friends, that are gathered here today, believe with us as we commit our Mr. and Mrs. Oteko to the hands of God. Gracious Father in heaven, as men whom you have commissioned, O Lord, have we of this day come to witness the joining together of Lamech and Rosemary. 
before you and these witnesses. And now, Lord, to you we want to commit them, that the good work you began, drawing them together with passion and love, and granting them to have several things to share in intimacy. Now, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit shared upon their hearts, give them the commitment that will keep them together until the day they will stand before the judgment seat. Father, we want to pray that all the desires they have, even as they've delighted themselves before you today, grant them, O oh Lord. Bless the work of their hands. Bless them, Lord, of all the expectations they have. And above all, prepare them for thy kingdom come. We want to pray especially, Lord, that even as they go forth into their life together, you will be to them a hedge around them against all powers of evil that will seek to come against them. We also want to pray, Father God of Israel, that you will bless them while in the city and in the village and in the country, that you will indeed, God, grant them to see the blessings of their better days and eat the fruit of the land. Father, prosper them, for nothing is impossible with you. And of such, we commit them into your hands, believing that you will bless them. Thank you, because in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Father, all we ask, may you be Emmanuel in this home, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen, amen. We want to have another special prayer. Uh, there is, this is a big family. I want to invite all the, chil the children to prof that are here today. I know that uh, baby, is not baby is not around. Debbie, Debbie is not around, but the two are here. Please come. I want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. Come. Are they there? Are they, are they around? Are they around? Okay, please call them. We want to pray. Pastor, I want to ask you to come and pray for these children. Um, this is a very special um, marriage, and therefore we want to acknowledge God's blessings. You know, as we are studying about Isaac, Isaac begins life with blessings in advance. And this is what I see in this union. They already begin with a blessing. Uh, that they have two children that God has given them in advance. So we want to pray for them. Please come. Um, okay, come, come, come. I know Debbie, Debbie is not around, but uh, I think there's also... Tim and Belinda. And... Jenna. Jera? Jenna. Jenna, that is it. Come, come, come here. Pastor is going to pray for you that you also be joined by the Spirit of God to this union that you'll not feel apart or separate but you'll come and be together come Belinda yes is it not a blessing Belinda our God is a God who blesses double double and I believe this is what he's giving you today where is Jerry okay Come, come here. Yes, hold your hands with daddy and mommy there. And Jera is coming, yes. You know, as I was speaking, go and study the, st the story of Isaac. Isaac never dig wells. And this union is such as of Isaac. They already have the blessings. Children and grandchildren. So... Yes, catch daddy there and now my pastor. Please join us as we pray for them. Pastor will commit them to pray. Shall we humble ourselves for our prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to come before you to glorify your name because of these blessings. Lord Jesus, we want to confess that we don't have any other testimony on earth apart from your divine intervention. We have seen you today, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, allow me to commit the children unto your hands, Lord. 
First and foremost, I want to thank you because you have taken care of them, you have led them, and you have even blessed them. Father, glory and honor be to thy name. Father, I want to commit them unto your hands so that you may take care of them, lead them, and let them grow to the level of your expectation. Father, take care of them and let them be one of those who will enjoy with you in the holy place. Father, I want to pray that you may bless these parents, Lord. You have united them today. They are now parents. Bless their womb. Lord Jesus, may we see your blessings expanding in their family. Bless their ministry also. Because they are tools of your kingdom. I want to pray that you may use them according to your will. Father, we want to thank you because of your servant who has officiated this marriage. Thank you for the message that you have heard today. May it be a blessing also to all of us. For in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and Belinda and Jerry. You can now go back to your place. I hope we'll have another moment again. Thank you so much. And uh, Mr. and Ms. Oteko, I realize your name is Oteko, right? Yes, that's my Oteko, uh, please, if you could come for the signature. Yes, thank you, Belinda, for that hug. Um, please. In the meantime, do we have some Intel music as we sign the certificate? <clears throat> Just as I am without one flee, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am and waiting not to read my soul of want of blood to be whose blood can cleanse its spot, O Lamb of God, I come.
family and friends. A very special privilege to introduce to you. Please, could you stand up? Family and friends, this is my privilege and very solemn responsibility to present to you our newest couple in town, Mr. and Mrs. Oteko. Amen. And uh, to affirm that is the certificate that the government gives them, and I am delegated to do that on behalf of the government. I give it to you. Uh, that's not my responsibility, sorry. Um, my sister. Yes, I've given it to you, my sister Rosemary, not Mrs. Oteko, sorry, Mrs. Oteko. Yeah, Rosemary is getting disappearing a little bit. I've given to you this certificate because somehow it's God's gift to you as a woman to be the one who preserves everything. And beginning with this, God has given you this certificate and many other things. The wealth, God will bless you. It's upon you to be the, well, the, the wise woman to preserve them. So I don't know how you want to preserve that. Beginning with that, let's see your model. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Elder, I've known you to be a very generous man. And now I, this is going to be an expanded generosity, that your courts are now going to be opened at will by this lady. And I can see you're opening it willingly. I hope the lady will also be very preserving for all the wealth that God will bless you together. Let's give them a clap, this newest couple. Amen, amen, amen. Now, before I invite Pastor Ambuchi to commit us to the final prayers, I want to invite the MC, you can have a seat, please, to come and give us a few announcements, and then Pastor Ambuchi will give us a final prayer. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Pastor, I remember you saying that um, there are many elders here. In fact, it is pastors and elders. Um, well, Dr. Terry and Mrs. are blessed to be having the, all these people around them, and we want to thank God for them. Uh, very quickly, time is fast spent um, from here. By the way, we've come to the end of the service. I'm just giving us what comes next. Immediately after this, we are going to have a brief photo session. And um, the groups that I'm going to call will accompany the bridal party to where they are going to take this brief. Um, we, are going, we are going to have the brief photo session. And then for the rest of us, I will plead with us. Are we listening? You'll just have to tarry behind for about 10, 15 minutes. Then after that, we will join. We will go to the tent where we are supposed to be meeting. Uh, we'll be having our reception. The first group, of course, the bride and the groom and all the pastors. Number two are Oasis elders and the wives. I believe they're here. Three are parents, maternal, and then we have paternal parents. We have siblings, both paternal and maternal. Then we have uncles and aunties, both paternal and maternal. We have the cousins. And then we have the work colleagues. If you are among this group, kindly, kindly as they walk out immediately after so that we can be able to have this as fast as possible. Time is fast spent, and I think there is limits to how long we should be here. If we did that, it would save on our time. May God bless you. Thank you. I want to request us all to stand up, please, as Pastor Mbuchi commits us. I hope, as our MC has said, we'll have the bridal team on the recession and the pulpit team will follow. After that, the rest will come, as been announced. Pastor Mbushi, please. Shall we pray? 
pray. Shall we pray? We have been edified with the counsel from your scripture. We have had the privilege to listen to pieces of music and we have been blessed. We have witnessed the groom and the bride sharing their vows. A prayer has been said to this new home and a prayer has been said to the, to the children. O oh God, our Father, may all this bring honor to you and may the glory be unto you only, now and forevermore, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Yeah, we didn't do that twice, yeah. 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 We play the whole of the whole of the A flat. Okay. So I'll give you.